Zodiac. Okay, so I'm gonna talk today, how far have I been able to take the McGuffey's Eclectic Readers and the other associated products with our elementary language arts? Okay, so lately I've been wanting to um, declutter the schoolroom. I had a bunch of materials. I actually bought a bunch of stuff. The stuff looks good. I had a mix of um, kind of vintage books and things and then like newer things like Fix It Grammar and some IEW, uh, other IEW stuff. And I had some spelling programs. I just bought a whole bunch of stuff and I just wanted to get my hands on it and really look and study things for a while, wrap my head around stuff and kind of start experimenting with what looked like too much or not enough. I really ended up landing on the McGuffey's. So I was loving reading these anyways. Um, if you watch my channel, you know I've used them. I actually used the original set too. I um, built my language arts really starting with the readers as the core. And then um, I built my spelling program for my kids around the spelling book that came with this same set. I'm just really happy <laughs> with how everything is turning out. And I did want to try to condense a lot of what has been working for us into a simple language arts program based off of the eclectic uh, revised editions. And I know that everybody, and people, you, I, I add things on too and do things here and there. But I wanted to like really put it down in a simplified um, core layout that I could share with people because not everyone's going to want to add the same things or whatever or, or do things the same way at all. But so I wanted to share that with you. I came up with this, uh, my McGuffey's Readers Based Elementary Language Arts Program. And um, I'm working on this for a couple weeks, trying to get this laid out, get my mind wrapped around it. And I just thought I would start going through it a little bit with you. I'll probably take a couple videos um, so that if you decide that this is something you want to try with your family, you have plenty of thought exercises with me on here. <laughs> okay, so this is just a cover page I made. I don't know, you may want to use this, you may not. I started out by writing out my notes on how to use this program. That's what my first page is. So I started by giving you a materials and resources list. So these are the kind of things that I think you need or you need something like it anyways. So this is the four main components of a language arts program but or of our language arts program would be reading, writing, grammar, and spelling. And I did mention, so anything in this document that's underlined is actually a clickable link. So this will take you to the McGuffey Readers revised set um, so where you just so you buy them and then um, but you know you can also anything that was that you could find for free on here I put a link to Project Gutenberg because you can find these in the public domain and print them out I just think that these are worth I think these are worth buying you know, there, there's a lot of them out there you know secondhand obviously they're all secondhand because they're not printing these but that mine were in really good shape mine are from the 40s and you just cannot be, I don't know, you cannot beat the illustrations in them and how clear they are. And that's actually part of my program, which I'll show you. Anyways, I think these are highly, I think for like one of these books, even to buy it, if you want to buy one by one, was like $9.99 was like a really common price, which was amazing for what you're getting. Okay, so I'll probably be referring to this list a little bit here and there as you see things as I'm explaining how I implement my program. So what I have is actually I leveled it out into, I just said language arts level one, so like where I'm starting, and it goes up to level five. And they all look the same. You'll just see I have some slight changes in the activities. Three, four, five, right? And then here's just some extra a phonics chart and a grammar chart for the kids to fill out and you'll see that reflected here. There's just some note space down here so if you wanted to take notes. So I thought these sheets, this is probably going to start, I would say you could start using this somewhere between the primer and the first reader. And I wouldn't say that this program, I mean I think you could pretty much do the same thing with the original uh, set of McGuffey readers with this set. I think you could do the exact same thing just insert a different uh, set if that's what you have and you like this approach. Okay, so let's just start with talking about the primer. So I've talked before, I'll probably, I'll try to link a video down below of my, my ABC program. So I'm going to assume that you've got your kids through a phonics program 
and that they have you know those basic skills down and then they're ready to go into the primer. So a lot of people are going to use something like 100 Easy Lessons or um, Alpha Phonics or some or or just teaching them. Like I've been just directly teaching my four year old. I'm just teaching him with flashcards, <laughs> you know, the sounds right now. And then we're going to practice CVC words and um, probably just move into the primer. When you first start, I wouldn't worry too much about doing a bunch of extra stuff. And I would just, you know, this the beginning of the primer may even be review for your child. But that's, just start going through it so they get used to it. And they, they'll fall in love with this book. Look at just how beautiful this graphic, these illustrations, right? And I would just start getting them used to the style of the book and the rhythm of the day and start pointing out having them do just the reading portion with you until you feel that you're ready to add on to it but you can if they've already finished a whole phonics program and, and can stand out CVC words and they're starting into the primer you can probably just start with the level one activities so let's just go through level one reading right now so this is how I start my reading lessons, right? So you may start this somewhere in the primer or say even if you're already into the first reader, you know, you could just start here. Um, although you might make some, you know, adjustments as you see fit. But so what you're gonna do is you're going to open up your book. Say you're on lesson one, okay? And then it says student reads lesson preview words and letters. So I think, I think of the stuff that they pull out for you at the beginning up here, right? They've got some phonograms and letter and, and short words and then down here and even some phrases. So these are pulled out for you. I call this the, the previewed material, right? And so we were going to have them read those. So they'll be going, so a uh, and cat rat a k d n er t a rat a cat, a cat, a rat. I just want to make sure they can read that and then they can put, then you're going to have them read it to you. A cat and a rat, a rat and a cat. And the model is, it says teacher or student pulls matching phonogram flashcards and adds to review pile. So when I say flashcards, I'm referring to is to the phonics made plain cards. So if there is an an A here, an A, uh, right, phonogram, then I would pull out the A card and just put it aside. So I like to go ahead, feel free to write on your own cards, <laughs> whatever's going to help your child learn, right? And it says refer to, there's a wall chart that comes with these that you can't see because it's up on my wall. Um, and there's also the ABCs, these pages. If you have this book, I didn't put it on the list. So I don't think you must have it, but it's not a bad idea to have. There is the ABCs and other tricks if you wanted to read up on anything that was... I don't know, giving you a hard time. It probably won't at the beginning when it's so simple, but you may want to have your older students look stuff up when it's kind of, in, you know, tricky. So, and it gives some exceptions. So pull that into the, uh, you're going to make a review pile. So maybe if you're keeping a folder or something, you're just going to keep these in the folder. So I would probably just put this into their reading or spelling folder or wherever and just kind of tuck it aside um, for review later. So, but they also have a hard C right? That's what that symbol that cross when they cross the C. So we pull out the A, C card, the D card, the N, the R, R, and the T. Okay. Got a nice little stack of, of phonograms that you're holding on to. Okay, so let's say they, you know, were sounding this out for you and it might be kind of rough, right? Sometimes at first. So then the model says for you to read to them. So teacher reads. So they've read it to you. You've listened. You know, you correct them when you need to correct them. And then you say, okay, I'm going to read it to you. And this is the cue. You cue for them to read and to follow with their eyes and their ears. So they're going to follow you as you read with their eyes and listen to you with their ears. And you're going to read a cat and a rat, a rat and a cat. And then you say, okay, now you try again, try to read a little smoother this time. And you're wanting them to, you're, you're acting as the model for them. Because, you know, our language, it's not just written. It's a, it's a spoken language, right? So we want them to be able to speak it smoothly well too. So you guys have done that. And then it says student tell back to teacher. So this is the precursor to summaries and, and narrations, right? Student tell back. 
So say, what did, you know, can you tell that back to me what happened? And you, they could just said, they just said there was a cat and a rat. You're like, yeah, exactly. And then you're like, and there they are. So they've done all that good work with you. They're gonna finish with the picture study. So this is something I really love. These illustrations are amazing. And this is the magnifying glass paperweight that I look, I linked in the, um, mine's kind of dirty, in the um, materials and resource list. So I'd let them give them this and let them explore this illustration in all its beautiful detail. Right, I love, look at that bug. And you can see the eye contact, it's all lined up looking at that bug. And look at all the whiskers on that rat. And it even has the shadow and everything for it. It's, it's great, okay. So, and then I actually, I mean, I use this as a paper all the time. Like there's so many times I need it to hold the books open for the kids, like when they're looking at stuff. Okay, so that's a really simple example, obviously, right? It's gonna, it's gonna quickly pick up, quickly. They get longer and more complex very quickly. Okay, I like to have them read, the practice reading the script. Okay, so that's kind of the reading component for the first day. Um, the next day, we would review phonics cards, um, do the preview section again, and the passage, read the passage again, ask the student what the passage is about. So these are, I, I am giving you some comprehension questions, uh, and then point out a piece of grammar for focus. Um, so let's say we had just read, um, let's say we had just read this one and say, hey, let's say this was new. Let's say we hadn't seen an apostrophe S, right? This is a possessive S. It's not a contraction, but you don't, don't confuse them. Don't give them too much information and say, it will stand on Sue's hand and sing. And said, whose hand will it stand on? And they'd say, Sue's. And you're like, right, Sue's. So this, apost this is an apostrophe, this comma up in the air. And this is the possessive S. So whenever you see an apostrophe S, you know that that's who possesses, that's whatever they're talking about belongs to. So the hand belongs to who? Sue, All right, so that's why it's Sue's hand. You know, so give them that explanation, try to keep it as simple and succinct as you can. And then, it's some, and then um, that is the area of focus, right? You'll, and we'll come back to that. All right, so anyways, this is just gonna walk you through each day. You are gonna read each day with your kid. Um, and then there's going to be reviewing of the phonics and the previewed stuff, right? And I've got, you know, more notes for you in here, some little tips and stuff about that. Um, and that's where you always start with your language arts program. I would start with the reading component first. It's the most important. So uh, we wanna get, you know, the meat of our work done first. Okay, so every day has a slightly different um, direction. Um, something I like to do is on the last day. So we do a six day school week because we are um, Robinson curriculum. I say that loosely because I kind of, <laughs> I take it and make it what I want of it, but I do follow the guidance of six days a week. So that's why I have, you know, a Saturday or Sunday on here. Um, if you don't want that, you can just drop a day, <laughs> you know, just don't do that day. But what we like to do is to turn, let them turn the tables on the last day. Um, so you're going to review your phonics cards, right? So you're going to be reviewing these. So a, 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 we call it a, this spells k and s, we call it c, this spells d, we call it d, this spells n, we call it n, this spells er, we call it r, and this spells t, we call it t. Then it's gonna, they're gonna do the preview section, right? This, the section here, and then they're gonna read the passage. And then um, it says, student ask teacher comprehension questions. So all week you've been asking them some comprehension questions. Now it's gonna be their turn. They're gonna try to ask you questions, right? So you ask me questions about what we read and see if I can answer. And my kids always really love that, that we call it student teacher day. Like whenever we, we and we do that actually with a lot of stuff. We periodically have them be the teacher. Okay, let's talk about level one writing. So level one writing is going to focus on copy work. Okay, so for me, so my kids have already had a little bit of practice with copy work because I have them do this, the reading and spelling for beginner CVC words. Don't mind my recycled paper. <laughs> so I've already um, had them do 
um, some copy work like this. So they're kind of already kind of familiar with the concept of copy work. Your child may never have done copy work before. Um, it's not a it's not a big deal. They'll catch on really quickly. <laughs> so here is one I made for the first reader. Um, so I have copy work for I think the McGuffey's primer through the third reader. Although I don't think I have the third. There's one of them I don't have in cursive, which is it the second one? I think I'm working on putting the second one into cursive, but I recently picked up a new font. I've got two cursive fonts, but I wanted to try the Danelian, so that's what I'm showing you today. So let's say they had read from the first reader and then they had, they'd want to do the matching copy work, right? Let's say we're on lesson 15. So I give some guidance on how many sentences to, to do at the beginning. So I'm saying to do at level one, only one to four lines. So one to four lines. So it's up to you how many you want to your child to do. You really know what their endurance is and the, you know, best. And the point remember of copy work is to practice your handwriting first and foremost. <laughs> So give them some, I know I've showed this cue before, but it's been just so helpful for me. So I always tell my kids, so get a nice clear spot. You want to turn, right, your paper. So it lines up with your arm. You want to parallel with your arm. And then you're going to point. So this is the, I'm right-handed. So I'm going to point my pencil at my writing hand. So point, pinch, and then flip and hold. And then that's, how I teach my kids to hold their pencils and it's really helpful. Save yourself some grief and teach your kids to hold their pencil right when they're, when they're learning. Catch it as early as you can. Okay, I say one to four, it really depends on your kid. I started with one and I would have them, um, cause, because I did this top font or the model line, I wanted them to have a model to help them with spacing and um, formation and stuff. But um, I would have them first start out by tracing trace the model, right? So they could trace it and then they could try to copy it. Oh, see, I'm already off the line. See, I need more practice, don't I? Right, I, I mean, I don't have the best handwriting myself. <laughs> I feel like I never write anymore, hardly. I always print, okay. But you get the idea. So have them um, take their time, go slow. The point is not uh, quantity of writing, but quality of writing. And there's no point in having them do a bunch of writing if, it, if they're doing it wrong or poorly or sloppily and they're actually just practicing it writing poorly and they're making that their habit. So just have them go, just have them do less, you know? All right, so then the other thing that you're gonna see on here, it says, um, so let's say you had them do one line, right? Let's say they're new. The sun has just set, it is not. I let them stop there. Teacher checks for accuracy using the two color methods. I'm checking their handwriting, their spelling, their punctuation, and spacing. So I take two colors and I mark, when I start out, I mark literally everything. So see how there was an indent here? So one's gonna be my good color, one's gonna be my mistake color. So orange is my good color. I say, oh, look at that indent. And I have them watch me, look at that indent. Yay, good job. That was just, that was lined up perfectly. And you say, oh, right here make sure you want to go down all the way to the line oh good job on that capital good guess o h n yes oh yep exclamation point good oh good you got the space perfect capital good job i literally would check every single space every single letter right and if there was something that was especially good if i was like wow look at that j that J is absolutely beautiful. I'd make a really big deal about it. And good, 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 good. Um, I say, well, good job on the spacing, but right here on this capital I, good job on capitalizing. So I'd give one star for capitalizing. So I would give them credit. I'd say, oh, good job on capitalizing. Good. But um, see how open it is on the top? You want to open your eye up a little bit more on top good and then you're and then oh good good spacing a uh, good eye good 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 very good right 
So you want to give them, so they want to see overwhelmingly see more of their positive color than their negative, right? Now, if it's really just a hot mess, just have them, you know, erase it and do it again, right? Or they, maybe they have to write it underneath, or they may have to go down and do another line, right? There's plenty of lines. Okay, so that's the two color checking method. So every day, that's just all I say for, for writing, right? For writing at this point is, is really just handwriting, it's copy work. Okay, so now you're wondering, am I reading the exact same lesson every single day? Um, you could be, I would say you could be, but you don't have to be. When we opened up the primer, and it was super, super easy at the beginning, like if that's review for them, just have them read it. I would say just go ahead and have them read it until it gets to maybe lesson five, you know, or lesson four where it has some new elements in it, like uh, hello, semicolon <laughs> right there, right? We want to come, stop and point that out. So you don't want to miss that. So you may just have them do that one that day. But I mean, if they can already write, read and write fairly well, I mean, they may be able to start out with four lines. It just, it really just depends on your kid. But you could just have them read up to a point where it starts being at a, at a, a working level for them, not easy and start there. If my kids can master a lesson, like and by master, I mean they read it without mistakes and smoothly and with, you know, I can see that the, the proper inflection and stuff, then I consider it mastered. If that takes less than six, you know, days, uh, if it only takes like two or three, then I just move on to the next one. And this doesn't really matter. You can be changing your lesson here and this is gonna, you're just gonna follow it. You're just gonna say, oh, if I went from lesson three to lesson four and I didn't, if you didn't, I don't make my kids necessarily do all the copy work for that lesson if they're already mastering it at the reading level. I just let them go on. We just go on to the next lesson to read and the corresponding copy work. Does that make sense, right? Okay, so that's easy enough. So you've got a reading lesson down, you've done your copy work and checked it. Now there is a formal grammar time. At this point for level one, most things are going to be covered in a oral capacity. So let's say we had pointed out in lesson, let's say we were on lesson four and I had pointed out that semicolon. So, and that's what my focus was. That would be my focus piece of grammar, right? I'll say we're on Tuesday. On this one, I put introductory grammar lesson. So I would just say, you can pick whatever it is that you want to point out. So it could be something that you saw in that reading. You may want to point that out. You can either just discuss it with them. You can just do a little practice on your own, just talking about it or maybe writing it on, on the blackboard or anything like that. Or I have a book and I um, linked it for you. Or if you have a resource book, um, like I put in a oh, grammar and punctuation visual guide, that's a DK book. So you may wanna pull something like that or, or if you had any type of grammar book that you think is appropriate, you know. I've seen people have picked things up at the Dollar Tree and stuff before um, that they use or they have some kind of lesson plan for punctuation. So I'm mostly pointing out punctuation, um, capitalization, stuff like that. What What is an indent, you know, at this point? This is gonna be mostly, you know, oral practice, very informal. The next day you can review or continue what you're talking about the day before. And I do, uh, and you, you don't have to do all of these, right? These are, these are, uh, it's just guidance, it's suggestions, but you can make a grammar flashcard and put it in a review pile. So how do you make a grammar flashcard? I'll show you. This is easy, right? It's index cards. <laughs> and just, and let them do it. So give them an index card. Okay, so let's say what I had pointed out was that, you know, let's say we're on lesson four and it's the semicolon. And I'm not saying they have to have this completely memorized or anything. This is just practice. This is practicing studying and it's getting them familiar. So I would just say on the front, just go ahead and have them do a depiction of it. It's a semicolon, right? And then on the back of it, you're, you're gonna write out what it is. Have them write, and you, you're gonna have to help them. Semicolon, and give them some, you, so you can look this up, you can copy a definition, right? Or if you want to, um, 
you could Google it. If you know it, if you have something simple you want to tell them, that's fine. So a semicolon. So, so let's say, even if you had to look it up, it might take you a second to look it up. But just tell them a semicolon, right? Teach them how to write def definition. Right? You're going to have your term. You're going to have your colon, your full colon here to define it. And it is a mark that combines two related thoughts. And so you're saying, I'm, you've, there's two things that you're trying to say and you want to combine them. Or you can say it's a mark you can use instead of a conjunction or instead of and, but, and or. So you can give them the example. The man sat, the lad ran, right? You can have them write that. So i.e. an example. The man sat, semicolon, the lad ran, right? So these could be the man sat and the lad ran could be two different sentences on their own, but they're combining them because they were related. They're trying to describe one scene here, right? They're saying the man sat. You could say the man sat and the lad ran, or the man sat but the lad ran. But instead of using an extra word, they just put in a colon, right? That's just, there's two different ways to combine two thoughts. So you could have them write something like that, right? Or you could write it out and they copy it, or you could write it out and they trace over it or something, you know, just whatever. And then put it aside, keep a little, like you could put it in an envelope, your grammar envelope, or um, if you have some kind of little index box or something, you hold on to these because you can review them later. Okay, so then, so Wednesday, it says locate grammar focus item in copy work and highlight. It's okay to consult your grammar flashcards, <laughs> right? So you can, you can even give them their stack of, if they have, flat, you know, grammar flashcards, if they have a stack of them and see if they can find them in their copy work. So they go back, say, this one doesn't have that in it, but let's say I was had, you know, um, an exclamation point in there. Let's say that was one of my cards, was exclamation points. Then I could come back here and I said, oh, here's an exclamation point right here. Or, yeah, or right there it is when my writing, right? And kids love highlighting, oh no, my kids love highlighting stuff. And if there's multiple, then I'd say you also wanted them to highlight um, proper nouns, you know, or names that are capitalized. Then you could have them do John. Well, that's a name that's capitalized, right? And a different color. You want them to have them capitalize things that are the first word of a sentence. Then you're like, oh, there it is. They capitalized that first word. There's another capital, okay? And there's another capital first letter of the first word of a sentence. Oh, and there's one more. Look, they're all over the place, right? And also, let's say periods. Let's say you've gone over periods. There's a period right there, the end of that sentence. So now that they got to get some colors, right? They're going back to, to their work and they can also see if you have them do their own, then they start seeing how important it is that they write clearly <laughs> and legibly um, when they're having to go back and use their own writing for a, a follow-up assignment. Now, let's see, what else do we talk about? You can do, yeah, just keep doing more because you're gonna just keep adding in and pointing out more things. I would just be careful, don't point out oh, too many things in one lesson. You just wanna add on little bite-sized pieces at a time. Grammar lesson. Um, so this is really gonna be highly oral at this level. And of course, it's really easy to have a grammar flashcard review day, so Say they've you've mentioned a few, they've made a couple of grammar cards, you know, and however many they have, you know, they're just gonna do a review. So you can do it for them, or they can do it themselves, where they do the right pile, wrong pile. They're like, oh, what is this one called? Oh, what is this one called? It's not a winky face, it's a I think it's a it's a it's something about a colon. It's a, it's a bicolon? Or I don't know, right? Oh, it's a semicolon. That's right. What does it do? It combines two related thoughts. Oh, that's right. And you can even see if they, if they come across a you know, semicolon, you can ask them in their copy work to underline the two related thoughts that they're combining, right? You can do the same thing with conjunction words. What two thoughts, what two things is it combining? So be intuitive. I mean, at this level one, you're probably sitting with them doing everything anyways. And then the, for spelling, um, I have weekly spelling packets that are designed. I um, really can be used with any word list at all, but I use the words out of here. And so I've got a whole bunch of videos if, on that spelling program, but that's going to be part of this suite of McGuffey resources. So let's just recap. So you're for reading, right? You're going to go, you're going to be on whatever McGuffey reader, right? Probably a, the primer to maybe the first 
reader for level one, um, you're going to be doing the matching copy work, right? Um, print or cursive, whatever your choice is. You can always do copy work, you know, in a composition notebook if your child can, you know, open up a book and and copy out of that. Um, or if you have the time to sit down and write it out for them. Um, oh gosh, that's what I was doing when I first started this. And it was just taking so long. It was so aggravating, which is why I created this copy work. I wanted them to be able to have a model, right, of what it should look like. And I wanted it to be open and go for myself. So I just took, I invested in the time to make these and I'm not sorry. <laughs> okay. So then grammar, you are going to be leading this. This is going to be your eye and what you're going to let the books do the guidance on that because you'll just see they are um, gently adding on to these. Uh, there's like now there's quotation marks. Now that's letting you know someone's talking, right? So as you see new things introduced, just point them out. The phonics charts and stuff. Okay, so um, when they are pulling, you know, these out, I do for wor words or letters that have multiple pronunciations, uh, like a, 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 and a uh, for um, a, I like to look up, I like to note down the diacritical symbols and stuff. So I provided this phonics chart here. So when you get to the day on the schedule where it says to fill in the phonics chart, what day is on level one? It's on Friday. Fill in phonics chart with all flashcards. See page 95. So I think when I did that, it's because I was looking in the first eclectic reader. I think that's why it says that. I should probably go back and change that make let people know of yeah, 95 and 96. So in the back of the first reader, there's this phonic chart. So I basically just reproduced it, except for I left blank the phonogram that would go in. So I am using his classification system since we're studying his stuff and they had kind of a different way of looking at things. You see things, you see things like mostly talking about vowel teams and this is talking more about enunciation. So it's a slightly different focus. I'm not saying you, I mean, it's good to know digraphs and so they have to have a different way of thinking about stuff. Um, they call them aspirates, subvocals. They've got long vocals and short vocals and diphthongs, and these are vowel sounds. So this one would be, so this is the word eight. So you can have a um, look at that in the back of the first reader on page 95 to check what it is, to see what it is, which one. But I would just do it based off your cards, right? So you pulled an A, and what was the A sound that you were reading? You were reading whatever, what were we in? Well, that first day we were just doing A, ah, right? Like in the cat, the mat, A. Ah. So, and you can see it's got the brevet over it. So I would do that. I would say, um, where is the A ah sound? The short A ah sound, short A. That's cool. It's kind of what we call it now as an am, right? So you can see it here. You see the A with the brevet over it. And I'd put the brevet over the A here to correspond to A as an am, right? And something interesting about phonics I learned um, from watching one of the bazillion videos on phonics that I have looked up <laughs> um, is that... So you always hear about long vowels and short vowels now, and I was always taught a long vowel is just a vowel that said its name. So a long A is just A, right? And a short A is A, ah, and I was actually never taught anything else. <laughs> I wasn't taught about broad A's or anything like that. But I believe what that comes from is it's literally long and short is the duration of the sound, not the sound itself, like not the shape of the mouth that you make. So like eight, you say a and eight a little bit longer, right? And you say care, care, you, that a hangs in the air a little longer. Look, cause look at this, they say last. Now I would have thought last that says ah, I thought, oh, that's a short, that's a short a, that's a short vowel. They're calling it a long vocal because listen to this, last, he was the last in line. Did you hear how long I said the ah sound? Now listen to me say apple, apple last apple last which one 
did that A hang just a little longer last? So it's actually, this is actually, a, the reason I included this in here for my kids to do, I'm not, I mean, of course you can take it or leave it, you can do whatever you want, but it was because I wanted, I felt like this was a deeper understanding of the roots of our language and um, that this would benefit them in the long run to understand like where things came from and that, that people have kind of changed it. People say ah and ah are so short, are so similar, they just call them the same thing. Because you make the same shape, you know, with your mouth and your throat and your tongue and everything. It's just how long you, you let the air pass over your vocal cords, right? So um, anyways, I thought that was an interesting, different way to look at the sounds. And I think probably a more precise way to study our language at, at the beginning. And, um, but they're also, they're, they're learning the diacritical marks. And if they go through this, it'll help them as they're using these resources because we'll be learning what, you know, why he's marking things the way he is. And so it'll, you won't be confused if you start at the beginning and just go through it with them. Okay, so yeah, and spelling. Yeah, see my, I'll link the, my spelling playlist for you down below. So I would just get, you know, if you're in language arts level one, um, you can wait to start spelling until you think your kid is ready, really. I don't think you have to start it as soon as you start reading, in my opinion. But you're just gonna pick out, I says mine, I have them for grades. I say grades one through six. I wish I just put levels one through six because grade is, is kind of more imprecise, especially if you're like us and you do year round homeschool anyways. So, you know, just start, you're just gonna have some kind of, I mean, this is my older son, so it's grade six, but you're going to have a weekly packet and just every day has a different exercise for them to do. Um, I wanted these to try to be as um, independent as possible. Um, my year one and two has like fill-in sentences and some other things. <laughs> I did a good job stapling that in upside down. <laughs> so I while I was paying attention. Um, and then of course the last day is a spelling test. But as I said, I've got extensive videos on my spelling program and all the stuff um, and how to set up a spelling folder and everything. And it's, it's kind of, it's, so I won't uh, bore you with repeating myself here on too much stuff. Okay, so, so level two, what's going to, so what's going to change? And I say, and you can change between levels just whenever you think that they are ready. So remember this, these levels are not going to be a direct correlation with a book number, with a reader, reader, you know, primer through whatever. Um, I would say I'd only use these levels up and up through the third reader, um, I, cause, because I haven't even, um, my, none of my kids have even done the fourth, I haven't even got into the fourth reader yet. So I'm not going to go beyond my experience level. But I, I mean, my son started, he's read it this far, but he was just reading it. And then he stopped, he's gonna pick it up later. He's just reading some other books. Um, but these are really neat because look at, they do stuff like they Now they're starting to give, they kind of, uh, they jump up a level here. They start giving some background information about the authors. They still have these uh, wonderful illustrations, but then look at it, they've got um, definitions for you. So dawn began to grow light, stir, excite, befall, happen, shivering, trembling from cold. So they've got so I thought that was really neat that they've got some vocabulary words in here already picked out for you and defined. And if they're just reading it and they don't know what it means, they can look it up, right? Um, and then they've got exercises. What is meant by driving the wolf from the door? In the third stanza, what does Saint before Nicholas mean? Who is Saint Nicholas? What did Piccola find in her shoe on Christmas morning? So it's got some comprehension questions built in, which I really, really like. Um, I wish they had done that on the earlier ones too. Now, you could have them even use this as their writing exercise, right? And this could be, at this point, a jump off point for um, essay writing if you wanted to, or some kind of response to the reading. If you want to do daily writing that way, like I said, I haven't got that far, so I haven't, I haven't planned that far. So these are going, to, I also have these grammar I have these grammar and reading comprehension. I have a whole bunch of language arts um, bookmarks. These are free and I, I linked them in that resources uh, list that you can go find them. Just print them out on some like cardstock and print them. 
but blue would be level one. Um, the red ones are more like level two-ish. Um, and then the green ones are maybe level three-ish, four-ish. Um, but these will help you if you need help with comprehension or like wondering what grammar components maybe to look for to, or to look up with them. So, um, and then you can give yourself notes. So if you want to, you can just print these out at the beginning of the week. You can print a new one or you can print a bunch of them and you can just check off. You can write the dates and you can use this for your record keeping as well. So when you think they're ready to go to level two, just go to level two. I would say move into, they're probably ready to move into gentle grammar at this point and they're to here and they're doing four to six lines of copy work and um, they're still doing their whatever spelling packet they're on um, and there is something it's just very similar they're going to summarize the passage to the teacher right um, next day you're going to ask them what the passage was about right you're looking for a moral or a theme or a main idea you're going to ask the student a bookmark comprehension question so if you see that we are saying these, these the book, the comprehension bookmarks. Do we know setting? Do we, who are the characters? Do we know the genre? Uh, can you summarize this in order? Who told the story? Why did the author write this? Do you think? So there's a whole bunch of stuff. Did can you, did can you give me a fact or an opinion ex example from this piece of writing? So this will give you stuff to ask them. Um, and if you don't know what, it, if you're confused about the whatever it is, just like Google it. <laughs> You're like the main idea how do I know what, what's the main idea Google main idea or if you have resources you can look it up but you know the main idea it's, it's pretty self-explanatory right it's whatever the main topic is and then there'll be supporting details for that main idea um, grammar lesson so I would say just start doing you know a gentle grammar lesson on Monday uh, maybe Tuesday so Wednesday locate grammar focus item in the copy work do another grammar lesson. It says it's okay to, pre to review previously covered grammar. Um, or, you know, like if they don't have it mastered, just go back over that same concept with them again. Grammar lesson, grammar flashcard, review. So this one's, it's not gentle grammar every day. Um, now I'm saying in level three, it's gentle grammar. Do a whole lesson every day. Just remember, if you, I think I put this in my notes, in the early levels, if they are um, kind of exhausted because they only have so much stamina, they've already read a whole bunch, answered your questions, done copy work, they still have spelling to go. You can skip grammar, <laughs> honestly, because you're orally pointing things out in the book and stuff, right? You're already talking about it. You're possibly already making grammar flashcards here and there. If they don't want to do a grammar lesson. That's okay if you don't, if they don't have it in them. It's okay. Or you can cut them up. So digital grammar, you can buy them um, pre-printed like this, which are great. Um, or you can get them for free. And I put both of those things down, and like I and print them out. And I like both versions. Um, when I printed them out, the free versions, I bound them all into one giant book. So this is all four of the books in one. But you know, if they are going kind of slow. You don't have to do the whole lesson. You could do one. You could, you know, go through the instructions and do one or two a day, right? Or you could do these orally instead of having them write. You could say something. If you want to turn this one into an oral, uh, I'd say it says copy these sentences, place this mark, right? That's the question mark at the end of each question. Is the boy here, right? And they write, is the boy here, question mark. So you could just have, you could have them say something like if I said, um, just what, what is this called? Right? Oh, it's a, what's that mark called? We call it a question mark. What does it mean? It lets us know they're asking a question, right? <laughs> it's not a, it's not a statement. You can even tell them, uh, we call these sentences, um, interrogative sentences, right? If you want to, I don't know when you want to start introducing those big, long, you know, uh, terms and stuff. I start saying it pretty early uh, because they just hear it so often and then I have um, some visual aids up and so they can see them on the wall too. But anyways, I digress. By level three, they're just doing a gentle grammar lesson every day and you're checking it. They're still doing their spelling. For writing, at this point, I stopped giving, like I've been upping the 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 copy work. Um, but at this point, I just say less than copy work. I'll let you decide how much you think they can do. You can do it by time. You can say, I want you to do the whole lesson. Um, it's up to you. A good 
uh, note is if they are messing up of uh, if it's really sloppy or they're not wanting to take their time um, just have them do the tracing because at least they're not practicing doing it wrong you know and if they do it uh, anyways it's I, I like to use the model to trace um, we've done that a lot especially if they're having a hard time with a particular skill okay um it starts moving into telling you to, to use the comprehension check-in bookmarks. So that's things like this, right? Um, but there's grammar ones and there's comprehension ones. So grammar, um, identify the subject and the predicate. Um, is there a coordinating conjunction or a semicolon? So you can pick what fits with um, your child's level. You're just working on your phonics chart. You're just filling stuff in. There's also a grammar chart. Where did I put my grammar chart? Mm -hmm. The grammar chart looks like that. So you can have them start filling this in too. So as they're collecting those grammar flashcards, there's a day that in there that says fill in the grammar chart. You can say grammar component. Okay, it was we're starting out with punctuation probably, right? Ex right, it's that it's a period. Um, period. You can say ends a statement or command, right? Then you just write a little example. Um, like the man has a hat. The man has a hat. And there's that period, All right? There's a statement and here's a command. Give me my hat, All right? Two different sentences that end in period. One's a statement, one's a command. So anyways, this is another thing, it's just optional, but you can have them just um, adding on to that as they go, um, and they can just keep it, you know, something like this. You can just have them use this to mark, right? You can have just have them like mark their, their spot, put it there, right? They use it as a bookmark or maybe stick it in the back of the book or something like that um, so you don't lose them. Let's see, and then level five. So here you're still, I'm still having them read to me. Um, again, level five, this is probably gonna be more like the third reader, not a, you know, second or third, read, late second to third reader, not uh, the fifth reader. <laughs> um, so you're still having them read to you and you're asking them comprehension questions and kind of talk about grammar stuff. Um, they're now on to writing assignments, whatever you see fit at this point, right? This is your discretion. They may be past, they're probably, they may be past the copy work stage right now. So they may be into some other writing resource. And um, yeah, so I'm leaving that up to you. Grammar, I would say if they should be possibly done, if they're done with gentle grammar, if they've gone through all four levels of this, then they are ready for Harvey's grammar. So this is Harvey's grammar, elementary grammar and composition. This is the first one. Um, and these were written to go with the McGuffey eclectic reader, actually with the revised edition. So this is actually what was meant to be used with the readers originally. And so let's say maybe around fifth or sixth grade, fifth, sixth, seventh, something like that. They're going to start this. And, um, you can just start assigning them, you know, their lessons in here. So this is going to start out, I would just maybe have them take notes, right? It starts out on objects. Have them take notes so they read it. Maybe what, what are senses? Um, and they talk about all these things are objects. What is an object, right? Have them define an object as anything we can perceive or of which we may be conscious. So a word, a syllable or a combination of syllables used in the expression of thought, right? And then there's some questions. So you can maybe have them answer those questions. So do some definitions, answer those questions. That's a good lesson for the day. So what they do in the beginning is they kind of load you up on definitions and explanations of things. And then they move into things like that are more exercises, right? And I wouldn't write in the book, it says place an A, or an and before that, I wouldn't do that. I would just have them write an egg, an ode, a cart, a goat, an oven. I would have them write that in your in their like composition book and then you check it. So you actually can get, there are answer keys 
for this. So I would save yourself the headache of figuring it out and get the answer key. So there are other free options. So of course there's other options for grammar and things. Um, there's these primary language lessons. This is free. Um, I know people, I've seen people use these. And then here's the intermediate language lessons by Emma Searle. Um, so, I mean, I printed them out because I wanted to see them and I, I'm not gonna lie, I liked the colors. I liked this kind of mustardy color. Um, but gentle grammar is just working so well for us that I kind of don't want to mess with, well, I don't want to mess with, if it's broke, don't fix it, you know what I mean? So I think I pretty much covered it. Do you have any questions or anything you want me to talk about more in depth about that? I'm gonna link this down below for you. This program is free. Um, you know, print it out as many times as you need, check things off. Um, tell me if you end up using it or it, how it works for you, or if you have any helpful suggestions for how I can make it better. Uh, other than that, happy homeschooling.